Radio's Biggest Show. From Hollywood, your friendly Walgreen drug stores and Walgreen agency stores present the 1946 edition of Radio's Biggest Show. With Bob Hope, Frank Morgan, Ginny Sims, the Andrews Sisters, Dennis Day, Rochester, Vera Baig, Eddie Duchin, Ray Noble and his orchestra, and me, Harry Bonzel. In a full hour of entertainment celebrating the 45th anniversary of America's favorite drug stores, Walgreens. Friends, high in the Irium covered Sierras lies Bob Hope's Grand Hotel, a veritable den of intrigue, inhabited by a strange group of guests who has come from far and near to dunk and drink the life giving water. Of course, what they get is very little life and too much hope. <laughs> but still, they come with their shattered nerves and aching backs and their bulging wallets, making them easy prey for the parsimonious, palm itching Mr. Hope. And here, standing in the center of his lobby, with his upbeaked schnoz twitching hungrily as he rings for bellhops and whistles at the girls, is old Scrooge himself, Bob Hope. Thank you very much. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob helping Walgreen Drugstore celebrate their 45th anniversary, Hope, telling you to brush your teeth like a little beaver with that pepsodent that you get from Walgreens, and when you're celebrating your silver anniversary, you won't have a Lone Ranger inside your beans. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be working for the Walgreen people. I've patronized Walgreen Drugstores for years, and I have no complaints. In fact, only once did I ever get a wrong number. <laughs> But I managed to ditch her. Well, here I am. <laughs> here I am running the Grand Hotel. Yes, sir, for the first time, I'm on the same side as the host detective. But this is the very... For the first time, I'm on the same side as the host detective. <laughs> I thought it was in the reading. But anyway, <laughs> and this hotel is really ritzy. Just to give you an idea how deep the carpets are, Frank Sinatra walked across the lobby and his bow tie picked up three pounds of fuzz. Don't force anything. I race. <laughs> it's an hour, you know. We build, you know. <laughs> so we don't build down, that's all. <laughs> Our rates are very reasonable. For $10, we give you a room with shower. For $5, we give you a room with bath. And for $2, we have a bellboy squirt a wet sponge through your keyhole. <laughs> We really have the last word in service. We serve breakfast in bed, and for the guests who like to be neat, we put it on a tray. And <laughs> and we change the linens every day from one room to another. And <laughs> go ahead. You want to catch up? Go ahead. Yes, sir. We got everything. We teach you how to play tennis. We teach you how to play badminton. But when it comes to horseback riding, you're on your own. All our guests, all our guests sleep like. I know you're out there, I know. <laughs> All I get sleep like logs, and if it gets cold during the night, the clerk comes around and rakes more leaves over them. <laughs> and we're really up high here in the Sierras. Just to give you an idea, this morning when I woke up, I sat up in bed and an eagle flew in and stuffed a worm down my throat. <laughs> and no dogs are allowed in the hotel. Not that we have anything against dogs, but we have a thin bellhop, and we get tired of digging them up. for its mineral baths, well, they're not exactly mineral baths. A coal miner stayed here last week and he forgot to rinse out the tub. <laughs> and if you drink enough of this water, you feel like a young man again. I don't know how much Crosby had to drink, but the Navy pumped out his stomach and recovered three destroyers. Mr. Hope, sir. Oh, uh, what is it, Von Zell? As your manager, Mr. Hope, I'm worried. Really, we're in no position to pay the high-priced talent you brought up here to entertain the guests. Well, I'm not going to pay them. I'm going to let them take all the mineral baths they want. <laughs> oh, come now, Mr. Hope. 
You know those baths are no good. No good. I took one this morning, and I've been in the pink all day. Really? Yeah, while I was soaking, someone stole my shorts. <laughs> well, I don't care what you say, Mr. Hope. That water does not make anyone feel younger. Is that so? Well, we have a little lady who's 110 years old. In 90 more years, she'll be eligible for an orchid from Tom Brenneman. It's all very well. I don't want to cry wolf, but if I were you, I'd figure out a way to raise money. Oh, that's easy. I can always sell my elk's tooth to Gravel Gertie. Now, run along, Von Zell, and let me do the worrying. And Von Zell, tell that guy sleeping in the revolving door that when people come in, he's got to arch his back. They're, com <laughs> they're complaining that something's dragging. Very well. Very well, Mr. Hope. Leave it to me. I'll take care of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard a laugh like that since the last time I asked Paramount for more money. <laughs> Von Zell knows I have to hire people like the Andrews sisters, Ginny Sims, Eddie Duchin, and Ray Noble's orchestra for our nightclub, Club 45. I don't know why I called it Club 45 unless it's because Walgreens are having their 45th anniversary. Gee, the Andrews sisters are going to sing. I wish I could win, but I can't afford the cover charge I charge. I love the morning glories growing. I love the morning And the breeze is softly blowing in the land. Ah, gee, yeah. I love to wake up in the morning. I love to wake See up the sun in the morning. come up at dawn and in the land. I love to walk among the flowers and taste the honey from the bee. I want to while away my hours, reading books and dreaming dreams beneath the tree. I want to see the ivy clinging. I want to see wanna the hear ivy the robin singing a little song. I want to attend the Sunday meeting. I want to attend the Sunday meeting. I want to hear the friendly greeting when I get home. home once more. I long to hold that certain someone. I miss him more and more each day. I'm getting ready for a wedding. Gonna get the train that's heading for Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew's sisters. You know, I like to wander around my hotel and see that everything is all right, but you know, I must get rid of my house detective. He keeps kicking the ladder out from under me. One of the best... One of the best things in my hotel is the Walgreens Drugstore. They're celebrating their 45th anniversary. I really ought to buy something. Welcome to Walgreens, Mr. Hope. Anything I can do for you? Yes, I'd like to have two three-cent stamps. And, uh, oh, yes, uh, do you have change for a nickel? Yes, sir. Uh-uh, <laughs> Mr. Hope, my hand goes in there. <laughs> Well, I was just feeling Lincoln's beard. Go ahead. <laughs> Say, is that Von Zell over there? Yes, he's waiting on a customer. I suspected he had another source of income. What's he saying? Forty-five years ago, in 1901, only a handful of people could tell you that Walgreens was the name of the corner drugstore. Today, in 1946, Walgreens is the household name for a drugstore in millions of American homes. The reason for this tremendous expansion is no secret, of course. More people trade at Walgreens than at any other drugstores in the world because they know that at Walgreens they get real value for every single penny they put out. They know, too, that every Walgreens drug or Walgreens agency store can supply their every drugstore need whenever they need it. Yes, today, Walgreens drugstores offer more than 17,000 different products and services. Products and services devoted to your health and happiness. Ready and available every hour of the day and late into the night. To you who have made this great growth possible, Walgreens are truly grateful.
For it is you who have so overwhelmingly decided that in the United States of America, Walgreens is the nation's name for drugstore. Gee, Mr. Von Zell, you're a pretty smooth talker. Well, thank you, son. My mother wouldn't like you to call me son, especially if you're not my father. <laughs> well, uh, never mind that, shall we? Just, just make me a double chocolate malted. Double chocolate malted? Gee, a drinking man. <laughs> uh, you're uh, new here, aren't you, boy? What did you do before you came to Walgreens? Oh, I sing on radio. Part-time work. Oh, you're a singer, eh? Yeah, and a good one, too. Uh-huh. I don't doubt it. I sing on Jack Benny's program. Uh, Jack Benny's singer, if I recall correctly, is Dennis Day. Well, how do you do? No. <laughs> Well, if it isn't Dennis Day, the mad minstrel. <laughs> Holy smokes, you are Dennis Day. Well, well, pleased to meet you. Never mind that. You come ride with me. Where are you taking me? To the Club 45, right next door. Hey, Ray. Ray Noble. Ray, this is Dennis Day, the famous crooner. I'm no crooner. I sing lousy and robust. <laughs> My fans wear long stockings with garters. Ooh, what I said. <laughs> Say, Ray. Ray, I, uh, I think you ought to have Dennis sing something, don't you? Yeah, I think you should, too. Well, uh, do you have any music? No, sir. A singer without music? Phil Harris doesn't ask for music. He says all the pieces look alike to his orchestra, so they just sit there looking at the racing form. <laughs> They play that good. <laughs> well, we'll try to emulate Mr. Harris. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dennis Day of the Jack Benny program and Walgreens Soda Spa will sing some sort of a number in some sort of way and all that sort of rot, don't you know? <laughs> Thank you. 
I'll get it here. Bob Hope's Grand Hotel, 1,200 rooms without a bath. But don't worry, we've got a well-lighted path. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hope. This is Rochester. Yeah. Well, what's on your mind, Rochester? The summer layoff has hit Mr. Benny and poverty has set in. Things can't be that bad, Rochester. They ain't all. We're living on K rations. A ration? Yeah, Mr. Benny attended a war surplus sale. <laughs> You're not living just on K rations. No, we got some powdered eggs fresh back from Iwo Jima. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad idea. What else did he get? Well, our town car now consists of a bulldozer with a convertible top. Mr. Benny also purchased a cannon for the defense of the front lawn. A cannon? Yes, sir. This one was used in the Battle of Bunker Hill. Bunker Hill was in the Revolutionary War. That's right. Mr. Benny attends every war surplus sale. <laughs> Rochester, just what are you calling me about? Is there anything I can do for you? Yes, sir, I'm considering some gainful employment during the forthcoming months of the Benny Panic. <laughs> well, drop out and see me anytime, Rochester. Goodbye. Uh, by the way, Mr. Hope, would you be interested in the poop deck of the USS Salt Lake City? <laughs> well, drop it in the mail. Oh. Goodbye, I was still worrying about how to pay my high-priced talent. Von Zell sensed it. I could tell by the frozen look in his bird's eyes. <laughs> Mr. Hope, just as I feared, the entertainers are impatient for their money. I don't know how you're going to raise it. Don't worry, Von Zell. I'll borrow it from Crosby. Crosby? Won't he want security? Well, what if he does? I can get along without an arm for a week. <laughs> well, you mark my words, Mr. Hope. You must find a way to pay these people, and soon. Enough of your impertinence, Von Zell. Go straighten the doilies under the cuspidors. <laughs> Take care of it, sir. <laughs> the only time I've had a laugh bother me more is when I didn't get one. <laughs> well, it takes all kind of people to make a hotel, but here comes one now it doesn't take. <laughs> Miss Vera V. Vera V. Hi, honey. <laughs> Yes, sir, and it still fits you like an old bathrobe, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you dear boy. <laughs> Why don't you get yourself a cement mixer and putty-putty up the holes in your hair? <laughs> well, Miss Vegas, it's been a long time since we've been together. It's wonderful. Yeah. Hasn't it been? <laughs> what a lovely hotel. Do you own it? Yes, Miss Vega. I'm the owner and also the clerk. Oh, come now, the clerk. I am the clerk. Oh, <laughs> you can speak plainer than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell me, Miss Dear, is this a respectable hotel? It certainly is respectable. Oh, dear, I guess this just isn't my day. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, Miss Vane. <laughs> what would you like in a room? What was that, Mr. Hope? I said... <laughs> I guess we don't need the rest of it, eh? Miss Vague, what would you like in a room? That's what I like about him. He's so silly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mr. Hope, 
know that while I'm here, Mr. Hope, I, I think I'll try your mineral bath. You? I don't think it'll help. <laughs> well, how can you say such a thing? My, my figure's something to write home about. Well, I knew you left it someplace. <laughs> Is that so? I think my figure speaks for itself. Yes, it's a shame it did so much ad-libbing in the wrong places. <laughs> A sharp tongue. You think so? And head to match. <laughs> Mr. Hope, mm -hmm. are the baths as good as they say? Well, I take them and look at me. <laughs> Mr. Hope, you're supposed to take a shower after you come out of the mud bath. <laughs> No wonder the gopher's been whistling at me. Well, I, uh, I can let you have a room, Miss Vega. Do you have many, many grips? What's that? Uh, do you have many grips? No, I still use the old-fashioned strangle hook. Oh, I... <laughs> that a sure fires the elephant pit, huh? <laughs> Mr. Hope, I'll have you know I travel with only the handsomest movie stars now. Just the other day, I had a date with Cornell. Wild? Yes, but I had to slip him a couple of drinks before he got... What am I saying? <laughs> hey, speaking of movie stars, Miss Vague, the bellhop informs me Mr. Sinatra just checked out. Well, we've all got to go sometime. <laughs> oh. No, he checked out of the hotel. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> By the way, Miss Vague, are you still having trouble with that man in the room next to you? No, no, we see eye to eye now. Oh, you see eye to eye. Yes, we both look through the keyhole at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have my troubles with men, don't yeah, I? It's too bad they're only interested in the opposite sex. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> seriously, Mr. Hope, no, seriously, while I'm here on my vacation, I'd like to land myself a cultured, refined, southern gentleman. Well, you'd better not try to land anybody, Miss Vague. You might get in hot water. Well, that's all right. I'm amphibious. <laughs> I just can't wait to meet a real southern colonel They're so romantic, Mr. Hope I can just see us on the veranda of our white mansion Me with honeysuckle in my hair And he with a tall glass in his hand Sipping his shoe fly pie <laughs> You know, Mr. Hope, they say southerners think about nothing but fast horses and beautiful women don't you think that means there's a chance for me? I don't know. What's your best time for a mile and a quarter? <laughs> so you want to be a colonel's lady, Miss Vang? Oh, yes. I'd make a wonderful southern belle, Mr. Hope. I spent all last week making shortening bread. Was it good shortening bread? I'll say. When I took it out of the oven, it got up and sang two choruses of Nelson Eddy. <laughs> I'll go up and look at my room because I don't want to be swindled again. You see, the last time I was here, the manager rented me a two-room bachelor apartment. Well, that sounds all right, Miss Vague. How were you swindled? Well, I looked all over it and I couldn't find the bachelor. <laughs> I assigned a room to Miss Vague. It wasn't really a room. It's our broom closet. I figured she'd be happy there. If she wanted to go for a ride, she'd have equipment and everything. <laughs> but I must be Von Zell. Where is he? Von Zell? Von Zell? Oh, there he is in Walgreens. In setting a value on any product or service, there can be only two questions. What is its quality? What is its price? For 45 years, Walgreens has sold drugs and drugstore products at prices that represent substantial savings to you. But what of the quality? Walgreens quality is summed up in the proud phrase, drugs with a reputation. Behind the drugs and drugstore products sold by Walgreens is a host of skilled employees, trained chemists and technicians working in modern laboratories, vigilant expert buyers constantly searching for new and better products. All the people who day in and day out ensure that at Walgreens or at Walgreen agencies, you will always get drugs with a reputation. That's why today, you and your family can rest secure in the knowledge that no matter how low the price, you will always get drugs with a reputation at Walgreens. <laughs> Walgreens. 
You know, sometimes I wish my hotel was managed as well as that Walgreen drugstore. We get the wrong class of people here. Some I like very much, and then we have men here, too. Pardon me, I'd like to register. Sorry, we're all filled up. <laughs> that makes us even. <laughs> Uh, I have a reservation. Uh, what is the name? Hetty Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> You're not Hetty Lamar. Yeah. She's already registered. Really? Which is her room? The one with the bleachers in front of the keyhole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a transom man myself. <laughs> But why are you trying to register as Hattie Lamar? Well, I'd never get a room as Frank Morgan, half-brother of MGM's two sisters from Boston. Well, but... Frank Morgan, look at that. <laughs> well, Mr. Morgan, let me turn you over to my assistant, Mr. Von Zell. Oh, Von Zell, will you please stop using the elevator to crack walnuts and come over here? <laughs> I want you to take care of this gentleman. Do you have any luggage? Of course, boy, bring my luggage. Is this your bag, sir? No. How about this one? No. Is this one yours? <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> well, Mr. Morgan, I've just looked in the rack again, and there are no rooms. I've got to have a room. I came up here for the baths. Just for the baths? Yes. I can't take a bath at home. I'm ripening some gin. <laughs> I see. Well, really, I wish we could accommodate you, Mr. Morgan, but yeah. we have no room. To think that I would be refused by the very hotel whose mineral springs were discovered by my dear old granddad's farm Morgan. No. Yes. Why, sir, your granddad must have been a pioneer. Yes, it was on this very spot that old granddad built his little cabin. And soon his little cabin was half full of little children and half full of old granddad. <laughs> Well, don't stop now, Mr. Morgan. All right, where was I? Half full of old granddad. Oh, <laughs> And so granddad dug a well, but he didn't strike ordinary water. Instead, he discovered the authentic fountain of youth. Though grandpa was 60 years old, he found that after bathing in this water, he could pass for a man of 30. Remarkable. But sad. While grandpa was passing for a man of 30, a man of 30 was passing for grandpa. <laughs> and ran away with grandma. <laughs> But don't think that Granddad gave up. He studied and became a great scientist. The only man to isolate the deadly mudlanger germ. The mudlanger germ? Well, yes. how, how did he go about isolating it? Well, he got it into a strange part of town and left it there. <laughs> While well, Grandpa worked in his little cabin to help humanity, he was harassed by one of the most vicious outlaws in the West, Deadeye Smorgasbord. Deadeye Smorgasbord? Hmm. He was a real outlaw? Well, he wasn't Jane Russell. <laughs> That's too bad for Grandpa. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but Grandfather wasn't afraid. Once he went out with just a slingshot and stood right in front of a charging buffalo. As the beast came on, Granddad fired the slingshot. And I suppose you're still using the buffalo as a living room rug. No, we're using Granddad. <laughs> I wish I could have been like Granddad. I've wasted my time. As I look back on my past life, I get a lump in my throat. Well, think nothing of it. It's probably a cork. <laughs> Zell, uh, there's some trouble in room five. Mrs. Brown's husband got back early and her boyfriend tried to hide in the closet. What caused the trouble? No closet. Now hurry up. <laughs> hurry up and get going, Von Zell. Very well, Mr. Hope. Just as you say, sir. <laughs> Sounds like the poor man's inner sanctum. Are you still here, Morgan? Yes, I am, and I intend to remain until I get a room. Well, it's $3 a day for those who want to remain until they get a room. Well, I'll be glad to pay for it. Here's a $3 bill. Now... <laughs> now, wait a minute. There's no such thing as a $3 bill. What? No three dollar bill? I've been swindled. I paid fifty cents a piece for those. <laughs> you know, Morgan, you might be just the man I'm looking for. There's a wealthy lady guest here who wants to meet a southern gentleman. Can you play the part of a southern gentleman for money? Somebody knock. I say somebody knock. <laughs> Well, 
Senator Foghorn, ah. <laughs> Say, you'll do, Morgan. Now, remember, I get half whatever money you get. I'll introduce you to her later. Now, just leave your baggage at the desk and make sure the cork's in tight. And uh, come on into Club... Come on into Club 45. Sir, you all is very kind. Hold the shortening bread till the sugar cane shows up, if you don't mind. <laughs> Here's Ray Noble. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Club 45 is extraordinarily fortunate in having me and my band at practically no expense to Mr. Hope <laughs> play China Boy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a fellow in Club 45 whom you've heard on the air many times. I don't have to tell you his name, but you'll recognize him just as soon as he says... Brought to you from Hollywood by your Walgreen Drug and Walgreen Agency stores from coast to coast. We're at Bob Hope's Grand Hotel, where Bob is playing host to Frank Morgan, Jenny Sims, Vera Vague, Dennis Day, Eddie Duchin, the Andrews Sisters, Rochester, Ray Noble and his orchestra, with me, Harry Bonzell, as manager. Hope is at a table in Club 45, griping as usual. Running a hotel like mine gives me a headache. I suppose I could go in Walgreens and get some aspirin, but they won't sell one aspirin. <laughs> buy a box of 12, but I may never get another headache. <laughs> oh, well, I'll get them anyway. I can always use them to make phone calls with. <laughs> Here comes my manager, Von Zell. Probably more demands for money. I don't think he likes me. Von Zell, I've just inspected the chairs in the lobby. Yes, I saw you picking up the cushions. How'd you do? Three bobby pins, a Dewey Bricker button, a pair of loaded dice, and a picture of Crosby shaking hands with Stephen Foster. <laughs> Now, Mr. Hope, really, is Mr. Crosby really that old? Oh, listen, when Sherman was marching through Georgia, Crosby sold him his corn pads. <laughs> well, he's a fine man, Mr. Crosby. I won't tolerate any disloyal remarks. Go downstairs and wash. Your apple pan looks very dowdy. <laughs> very well. Just as you say, sir. Oh, Mr. Hope. <laughs> oh, Mr. Pardon Hope. me while I laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Not too late if you want to get it in. <laughs> Don't be stubborn. Now, come on and laugh. <laughs> Wait a minute, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, fine. Sounds like my agent. Thank you very much. <laughs> want to try it now? Oh, Mr. Hope. Oh, Jimmy Taylor, <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Let's 
we have a song by another of our artists, the lovely Miss Ginny Sims, to sing Body and Soul. Everybody knows that when a doctor says, take as directed, he means take the medicine in accordance with the instructions on the prescription label. But to all greens, take as directed has a deeper meaning, a meaning of rich significance. To all greens, that simple phrase symbolizes the sacred trust that exists between doctor, pharmacist, and you. To every Walgreen pharmacist, take as directed means fill this prescription exactly as specified. It means have on hand a complete stock of thousands of drugs, no matter how rare some of them may be. It means that every drug in stock must meet the highest standards of purity, freshness, and potency. And that's not all. For at Walgreens, your vital prescription is compounded with sureness and care. Proportions are measured to the tiniest fraction of a grain, then checked and double-checked every step of the way by experienced pharmacists. Yes, that's a great deal of meaning to read into three short words, take as directed. But it must be the right meaning, because you and millions of other Americans bring thousands of prescriptions every day, hundreds of thousands every month, millions every year, to be filled at Walgreens. If I were Mr. Walgreens, I'd start worrying the feeling Von Zell puts into that commercial. Next year, this program is liable to be sponsored by the Von Zell Drug Stores. 
<laughs> Mr. Walgreens got nothing on me. I've got a little worrying to do myself. I have to get money by hook or crook. I got the crook. Oh, Mr. Hope. And here's the schnook. <laughs> Mr. Hope, I do wish you'd do something about my room. There's an inch of dust on the floor beneath my bed. Why, it isn't fit for a man to hide under. <laughs> well, Miss Vega, I think I found a gentleman you'd be interested in. Oh, you darling. Is there anything I can do for you? Heavens, no. <laughs> Mr. Hope, I'll have you understand I once had the prettiest face on Broadway and the most beautiful legs in Hollywood. Yeah, but I bet you didn't set Chicago on fire. <laughs> yes. Who's the man? Glad to see you thinking this late. I really am. Now, please, please, please. Here, yeah, who's the man? I'm well, here. You what, Don? Well, I'm very interested. Well, I'm, I'm kind of big here. Now, just a second. Hurry up. Down to a light boil. Watch your motor there, will you please? <laughs> yes. Now, here we are. Yes. This fellow is yes. a very distinguished Southern gentleman. He's right over in Club 45. Come on, I'll introduce you. Mr. Hope, do you think you'll marry me? Well, if you play your cards right. Well, who wants to play cards? <laughs> I don't blame you the way your deck is stacked. Now, there he is. <laughs> There he is, right at that first table. His name is Colonel Frank Morgan. Oh, he's a gray one, isn't he? <laughs> now, you wait right here, and I'll go over and get him. Remember, though, it's marriage or nothing. Uh, don't be too hasty, <laughs> but hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> I approached Morgan. I felt like a warden bringing news of a death penalty. His face looked like it had been chiseled out of marble. And knowing Morgan, I figured he probably did the chiseling. <laughs> he looked up at me, and I could see the sweat standing out in his martini glass. Morgan, I said. Well, sir, if it ain't my old friend, Mr. Hope. Not yet. Now you're going after the money. Now, wait a minute. That's your bride-to-be over by the door. Oh, oh very fine-looking person. Beautiful, in fact. <laughs> and dressed stunningly. That's a gorgeous white coat. No, no, you're looking at the head waiter. Don't you, uh... <laughs> don't you see that group of beautifully shaped girls in the backless evening gowns? Yes. Well, yours is the one in the turtleneck sweater. <laughs> No, no, not her. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you a coward? Well, at the moment, yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's got a million dollars for some southern gentleman. Oh, well, I say, lead me to that most gorgeous damsel. That's enough, Paul the... Weevil. All right. <laughs> Come on. Miss Vague, here's your admirer, Colonel Frank Morgan. Hello, Mr. Morgan. I understand you found a little place in your heart for me. Well, yes, ma'am. It's just a small place. <laughs> but you know how the housing situation is. <laughs> well, I'll leave you two lovebirds, and Morgan, remember, I get half the feathers. Uh, certainly. <laughs> Miss May, let's talk about law. Yes, let's do. Love makes the world go round. Love is the sweetest thing. Love is everything. <laughs> well, that's enough. Let's talk about money again. <laughs> Morgan, all I want from a man is comfort. Well, I can do better than that, ma'am. I can give you southern comfort. <laughs> I'm so thrilled being out with a real southern colonel. Yeah. I suppose you know all about the cotton gin. I didn't know they could make it from that. <laughs> Big, would you like to step out here on the porch for a breath of fresh air? Out on the porch? Yes. <laughs> Colonel Morgan, are your intentions honorable? Of course. Then what's the use going out there? <laughs> I'd like to ask you a very important question. Oh, well, that's different. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Right through here. Yeah. Oh, what wonderful air. Yeah. It smells like roses. Like roses? Sorry, I should have brought my San San. Colonel Morgan, you old rascal, you. Yeah. Now that you've got me out on this dark porch, what are you going to do? Miss Vague, may I kiss your hand? Oh, everybody wants to do that. What's my hand got that my face hasn't got? <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, please, Colonel, stop trying to bite the diamond out of my ring. <laughs> Purely, uh, purely an accident, my dear. I thought it was rock candy. Oh, the night is so enchanting. 
Colonel, put your arms around me and hold me close. Uh, now, wait just a minute there, Miss uh, uh, Hold me tight like this. You squeeze yes. me like I'm squeezing you. No, I don't. I tighter, 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 tighter. Please, please, Miss Vague, you're flattening my crew and curvex. <laughs> <laughs> You've been making advances to me. I have? What happens next? Suppose I make an advance to you. All right. Shall we say about 10000 <laughs> Oh, bless your heart. But money's so unimportant. It means nothing to me. It means nothing. Miss Vague, will you be mine? Oh, Colonel, this is so seldom. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be very happy, my dear. I can just picture us sitting out under the magnolia trees. Sipping mint juleps and reading your bank books. <laughs> Colonel, I haven't got any bank books. In fact, uh, I don't have a penny to my name. Ma'am, I don't think I heard you right. Wait till I adjust my acoustican. <laughs> I said I'm broke. I don't, I don't care. I have a real southern colonel now. Miss Vig, from now on, I'm a nasty Yankee. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, that is. Yes, Von Zell? <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Duchin has refused to play until he gets paid. Well, he should take it easy. I have a deal to get President Truman out here if he can get Petrillo's permission. <laughs> but listen, Von Zell, I made an arrangement about salary with Duchin. I know, but he said he couldn't use a barrel of Irium. <laughs> well, it would do him a lot of good. He has very yellow piano keys. I'll talk to him. Hey, Duchin. I'm sorry, Bob. I won't play until I get paid. Well, look, I'll give you my IOU. I won't accept it. I'll sign Crosby's name to it. That I'll take. Thank you. 
If you want to know how a tree will grow, look to its roots. If those roots are strong and vigorous, the tree will grow straight and tall. For the future of all things, of men and business alike, is a continuous part of their todays and yesterdays. Forty-five years ago, only yesterday as time is measured, Charles R. Walgreen Sr. founded the first Walgreen drugstore in Chicago, a store dedicated to the ideals of service to his community. That single store was the healthy, sturdy root from which Walgreen drugstores, as you know them today, have grown. Because those ideals were never changed. Today, more people trade at Walgreens than at any other drugstores in the world. But what of tomorrow? More Walgreen and Walgreen agency drugstores to serve you? Yes. Bigger, more modern stores, greater values, greater savings? Yes. But far more important. The more than 15,000 Walgreen employees renew their pledge to you to keep improving their standards of drugstore operation in every conceivable way, to serve you better than ever before in that bright new tomorrow that awaits all America, you and Walgreen. Things were getting really tough around my hotel, everybody screaming for money. I decided to pack my bag and take it on the lam. But my conscience stopped me. Stop. I'm going, I tell you. Why don't you stay and face the music? I'm tired of hearing onesie twosie. You can pay those people. You've got money hidden in your mattress. Stool pigeon conscience. <laughs> You're a yellow hope. I am not. That's the way I tan. <laughs> How can you be such a heel? I concentrate. <laughs> Pay up, Hope. Don't hurt your conscience. Remember, I'm in this with you. Then why don't you put up half? <laughs> I'd like to, Hope, but I need all the money I got. What do you need money for? I've got a date with Lana Turner's conscience. <laughs> Good, you take her conscience and send the rest to me. Bob Hope! Uh-oh, the Andrews sisters. I'll play on their sympathy. I'll give them a real sob story then when they won't think, even think of the money I owe them. Hello, girls. Why, Bob, you're crying. Yes. I've got some bad news. My cousin drowned and my uncle broke his neck and my brother-in-law was gored to death by a bull. <laughs> That's terrible. I hope you're not too upset to write a check. <laughs> well, that's a fine way to talk to a fellow who's brokenhearted. Oh, dry your tears, sunny boy. When there are gray skies. What don't you mind in the least? I don't mind the gray skies. What will I do to them? You'll make them blue. What's my name? Sunny boy. <laughs> What will friends do to you? Friends may forsake me. What will you let them do? Let them all forsake me. Who will you still have in the end? I'll still have you. What's my name? <laughs> Where am I sent from? You're sent from heaven. Have I any special valuation? And I know your worth. What will I do? You make a heaven. For who, right where, on what? For <laughs> me, right here on earth. God bless me. Who <laughs> well, I hold and pray, dear. You want me to promise something? Promise you won't stray, dear. Well, give me a good reason. I need you so. What's my name? (laughs) 
Yes, sir, I finally made it. I was one of the Andrews sisters. <laughs> Patty, Maxine, Laverne, and Bobby. Aglow with success, I strolled into Club 45 there to find all my employees listening to my nefarious manager, Von Zell. And that is why I tell you, friends, hope is nothing more than a crook. Take that back, Von Zell. I'm warning you, I'm a fighting fool. Okay, I'm fighting. I'm fooling. <laughs> you see what I tell you? He's a fraud. To think that all my friends would turn against me. I'm surprised at you, Ray Noble. Oh, but Robert, old boy, you're indebted to me in the sum of 94 pounds, 10 shillings, sixpence halfpenny, yes, and a threepenny bet. <laughs> How much is that? I haven't the slightest idea, old boy. <laughs> That's all right, just so it isn't money. <laughs> all right, all right, enough of this palaver. Oh. oh, we're taking over this hotel, and you, you are going to work for us. Yes, at what salary? The same as you paid us. Cheapskates. <laughs> just shut up and get to work. What do I do? Sing. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for the memory of a hotel I once owned. On money that was loaned, they've got me running errands now and answering the phone. How lovely it was. Hello. Thanks for the memory of Bob Hope's Grand Hotel. Our visit here was swell. You're welcome, Andrew's sisters. I'm glad everything went well. How lovely it was. Hello. Hello. Thanks for the memory. Who's this? Why, this is Dennis Day, all packed and going away. I want to thank you, Mr. Hope, for a grand and glorious stay. How lovely it was. Hello. Thanks. <laughs> you made my weekend bright, and your wine was a delight. That's only Mr. Morgan. Every night he slept quite tight. How lovely <laughs> that was. Hello. Thanks for the memory. <laughs> oh, the dice game that I broke. You were down to your last joke. But after I won your dough, who's the guy that pinched my paw? How lovely that was. Hello? Thanks for the memory. A silly joke Hope told about my manners bold. I have no yen for handsome men. Why, they just leave me cold. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, <laughs> yeah. And now we like to We hope you like to draw. And we will be brought. Walk we have them all. Off we glad we met you. Cheerio and This special program was the annual presentation of Radio's Biggest Show. Sent your way with the best wishes of America's favorite drug stores, your friendly Walgreen Drug and Walgreen Agency stores from coast to coast. Walgreens thanks the entire cast for their contribution to the celebration of this Walgreens 45th anniversary. Bob Hope appeared through the courtesy of Pepsodent. Frank Morgan appeared through MGM, producers of Two Sisters from Boston. Jenny Sims appeared through the Borden Company. Dennis Day in Rochester through Jack Benny, Eddie Duchin through the Kraft Music Hall, Ray Noble through Chase and Sanborn, Vera Vague will soon be seen in Earl Carroll's sketchbook. The Andrews Sisters are currently appearing in Walt Disney's Make Mine Music. Radio's Biggest Show is written by Manny Mannheim and Charlie Isaacs and directed by Ted McMurray. This is Harry Bonzel, who appeared through a crack in back of the theater, <laughs> saying, whoever you are, wherever you are, remember, you're always welcome at Walgreens.